Hi, I'm Dr Harvey, I'm a UK radiologist and I'm going to give an eight minute mini lecture on some of the basics of the statistics of machine learning, namely confusion matrices, sensitivity and specificity for binary classification tasks. So what is a binary classification task? It's essentially any task where a decision is either yes or no. There's only two possible answers. So in a chest x-ray pneumothorax detection algorithm, the binary task might be pneumothorax is present or pneumothorax is not present. And here clearly it is present. And if we want to develop a machine learning algorithm and then validate it and test it, we want to know how accurate it is at finding pneumothoraces correctly or ruling them out entirely. So what we can do is we can record the results of any test that we perform in what is known as a confusion matrix. And a confusion matrix is a simple two by two table where you compare the prediction from your machine learning algorithm against what's known as a ground truth. So on the left we have the ground truth of whether a pneumothorax is present or absent. And this ground truth is defined by uh, an expert radiologist going through your, your, your test set or a group of consultant radiologists going through the set and all agreeing what the ground truth is. The predictions are what comes out of your algorithm after it's run over the images. Now, if they both agree, the radiologist and the algorithm agree, that there is a pneumothorax, then that is known as a true positive, or TP for short. And if they both agree that there is no pneumothorax, then that is a true negative, or TN for short. Of course, the algorithm can be wrong. It can say there's no pneumothorax when there is one, and that's a false negative. Or it can say there is a pneumothorax when there isn't one, and that's a false positive. Now, this can be applied to any binary classification task. So here I've just switched out the, the labels for the rows and columns to whether the machine learning algorithm is positive or negative and whether the ground truth was positive or negative. And we can calculate the sensitivity of a test just by using the TP and the FN, true positive and false negative. So the sensitivity of a test um, is the top row and the specificity of a test is the bottom row. And that's based on the proportion of true negatives when the ground truth is negative. So the sensitivity is just a measurement of the proportion of correct positive results. It's also known as the true positive rate. It's an interchangeable term with sensitivity. And it has a very simple calculation. It's the total number of true positives divided by the total number of true positives plus the false negatives. Um, and this only uses the first two um, um, boxes in the first row. So specificity, on the other hand, is a measurement of the proportion of correct negative results, and it's known as the true negative rate. And the equation is very similar. It's the total number of true negatives over the true negative plus false positive total. And that gives you the specificity. So let's do a worked example. Let's say that we have 100 chest x-ray cases, and 10 have been ground-truthed as having pneumothorax, and the other 90 don't have a pneumothorax. We can run our ML system um, on this case, um, on these 100 cases, and let's say that the machine learning system finds 9 out of these 10 correctly. So it's finding 90% of the ones that are actually there. And it flags 3 of the remaining 90 as incorrectly having pneumothorax. We can put those numbers into our confusion matrix. So the number where it's been predicted to be present and was actually present is 9. So we put that in the top left box. And that means that the ones it missed is one. There were 10 with pneumothorax, it found nine, so there's only one left. In the second row, we can then say, well, we know that it flagged three incorrectly against the ground truth, so that's um, three false positives. And then we subtract that from the remainder um, of, the, of the cases which were indeed negative, so that was 90 minus three equals 87. So there we have our simple confusion matrix. And then we can just take those numbers that we've put into the matrix and calculate our sensitivity and specificity. So the sensitivity is 9 divided by 10.9. The specificity is 87, that's the total number of true negatives, divided by 87 plus 3, the total number that were ground truthed as negative. And that gives you a specificity of 0.96. Now this system is actually very good. Um, this is something that you might want to see in clinical practice. Very high sensitivity, very high specificity. An important point that I want to make, just before I conclude the lecture, is that these um, ratios of sensitivity and specificity are 
independent of the disease prevalence in your test set. Here, we had a disease prevalence of 10%, 10 cases of pneumothorax in 100. But the sensitivity and specificity remain exactly the same, regardless of how many um, cases are positive or negative in your test set. So let's just change the results slightly. We have 100 cases, now 50% of them have a pneumothorax. And the machine learning system is going to perform in exactly the same levels of sensitivity and specificity. So it will find 45 correctly and flag 2 incorrectly. Previously it flagged 3 out of 90 as being false positive, now it's flagging 2 out of 50 as being false positive. So we can put those numbers into our confusion matrix and do exactly the same calculations and you can see that you hit exactly the same sensitivity and specificity. So these are prevalence invariant metrics. Of course this doesn't hold if you have 100% uh, pneumothoraces or 0% pneumothoraces, um, but it holds largely for wide variations of disease prevalence within a set. So in summary, a ground truth is required to measure the machine learning system accuracy. The better the ground truth, the more confident you are in your measure of accuracy. Sensitivity is the true positive rate, specificity is the true negative rate, and both of these metrics are invariant to the prevalence of disease in your test set. And that concludes the lecture.